Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Call him up. Yes. That's something a lot of us should be doing more often. Yes. Instead of calling, he called everybody else up. <laughs> Girlfriend, buddy, yo, man, you know what's going on? I'm going through this. God said, what about me? Yes. Cast all your care upon me because I care for you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Since we got call ID and people call you and <laughs> you can decide if you want to pick it up or not. Amen. Back in the day, he just picked it up. <laughs> now it's like, uh-oh, there they go again. But God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Today's title is Making the Right Decisions. And the theme is Understanding Discernment. Making the Right Decisions. Amen? Amen? Amen. We need discernment Amen. to help us make make it through in everyday life. Amen? Amen. Amen. What's that? Who to marry? What house to buy? See if that works. Good. What uh, a career to choose? Amen? Amen. It can also help us in things like what to wear that day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Where to go to lunch. Sometimes we have what you call a divine divine appointment when the mm -hmm. Lord will take us off our usual route mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. and take us another way. Amen. Come to find out that later on we found out that it was a terrible accident. Right around the same time we would get there. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we make a wrong turn and realize that God led us to somebody who there to bless us or we become a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. Many of us have been in places. Uh, uh, we realize God has taken us to these places for a reason. Yes. And a lot of times we have difficulty in understanding or recognizing the voice of God. Is it God? Is it the Amen. devil? Or is it us? Amen. Yes. Can we discern when someone is hurting or not? You know, when we listen to people, we're so much preoccupied on what we want to do. And this person is really crying out and hurting. Jesus. But we don't even see it because we're all about ourselves. That's that story about the Good Samaritan. Everybody just walked past them, you know, because they were concerned about what they had to do. It's important that we learn to discern correctly because uh, this world we're living in, this world, there's, there's so many lies out here. <laughs> you know, there's so much, we live in an information stage that, you know, information stage that, there's information everywhere. But do we believe it all? Some of it's true. And most of it's a lie. Amen. Jesus had great discernment. I remember the situation when they caught the woman in the very act of adultery. And he said, if anybody ever sinned, cast the first stone. Evidently they had to put the stones down. Jesus knew the thoughts of the scribes and the Pharisees. And many more things that Jesus discerned. Psalms 119, 65 and 66. You could turn there with me. Two verses that's going to really help us to understand uh, this message today, making those tough decisions. Amen? We've got to understand discernment. Here in Psalms 119, 65 and 66, it says, Thou have dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment or discernment mm -hmm. and knowledge. For I have believed thy commandments. So he's speaking to the Lord and saying, Lord, teach me good judgment. Teach me how to discern. Amen. Discernment is defined as the ability to judge well, to possess wisdom, insight, or you can even say a mental vision of something. Spiritual discernment means the sensing the presence of God. It's an insight that God, he the, 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 the Thomas says here, Lord, teach me good judgment, teach me discernment. We must understand that discernment comes from God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And He wishes all His children 
to have this spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 12, verse 10, it says, uh, uh, some have the gift of prophecy, healing, the dead, some have the, 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 uh, the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits. So it's a gift, but he wishes all his children to have this gift. Amen? Amen. Discernment means to discern things. It means to discern something not seen. Amen? Amen. The ability to judge well. To see, hear, and understand spiritual things. Discernment is not like intuition. Because intuition is something that is quick and ready. It's the ability to understand something immediately. So, you know, you have, you have intuition. But it's different. When you're dealing with the spiritual discernment, it always has to do with something in the sense of uh, spiritual warfare. I'll give you an example. I made a statement earlier when we started about what to wear to work. So people say, well, you, you want to wear that to work? Or how could that be have anything to do with spiritual warfare? Let me give you an example. Back in uh, probably 2017, I was uh, experiencing some things on my job, and um, uh, it was definitely spiritual warfare. And they were trying their best to catch me in, in some kind of crime. This went on for about three months. And every time, I was ahead of them because God gave me discernment. Yeah. So one particular incident, you know, they wasn't no longer purchasing uniforms for us. We had to get our own shirt, along with light, light blue or dark blue. So I bought a light blue shirt. Figuring it's July, I want a dark shirt, I want a light blue shirt. Summertime, right? Got called in the office because his shirt's not blue enough. And it's not the one. I said, well, you're not issuing us any more uniforms. And it became a big thing, and I actually end up, uh, he ended up allowing me to wear it. He said, well, you can wear it, and uh, don't worry about it. The very next day, I was going to work. The very next day, this was the very next day, it was a Thursday, Friday, I uh, wore the shirt again. But the Spirit says, bring your navy blue shirt. <laughs> so I had it in the car. Got to work, did my first run, came back, I got poor in the office. And with the HR director and my supervisor. And he says to me, uh, before I went to the office, I went to the car and changed my shirt. <laughs> and he says to me, when I got there, oh, you changed your shirt. I says, is that why I'm here? He says, well, you know, he puts this form out there to say, well, you know, you want to go against company policy because you weren't supposed to wear that shirt anymore. And I'm looking at him like, God, have mercy. Man. Wow. We just had a conversation. I didn't say anything. I said, wow. He says, what, what, what made you, uh, what made you change your shirt? You didn't have it on this morning. You would not understand. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, just sign here that, you know, you're going to get a uh, uh, you know, policy. I said, well, you take that paper and keep it. I'm not signing anything. Mm -hmm. Be careful when you start signing things because you can mm -hmm. hang yourself. Yes. So that's why God gives us the sermon. Mm -hmm. And we need it. Something that was a minute like that situation, but God told me in the morning, bring your other shirt. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, all I have to do something, always have spiritual warfare. And we need discernment because how can we be in this world as believers and not know what, how God is directing us? And he's going to direct us by his spirit. Amen. And if discern means to understand and to have insight, we need to have insight in everything that we do, things that we encounter. I mean, you know, we need that thing that's not seen. Like I said, it's totally different from intuition. It's similar but it's more of a, a sense of God giving us warning or understanding about a situation. You know, praise God. Amen. Praise Him. The sermon is not like a superpower. It's not like a superpower. It's actually a gift from God Amen. that He gives His believers. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us in, uh, 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 we don't wrestle against flesh and blood or principalities and powers. 
stating that uh, uh, we have spiritual forces working against us. The minute that we confessed Jesus as Lord and he entered into our life, we became a target. We became a target. So don't think you're, 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 you're free from damnation. Praise God. Amen. You're free from total, uh, 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 total uh, destruction in hell. But as while we are living here, to carry out God's plan, amen, and to hear from him, we need spiritual discernment. We need to make correct decisions. Because mm -hmm. believe it or not, a lot of the decisions we have made in the past weren't from God. It was our own understanding of how we felt about something. Mm -hmm. Let's say if you get angry. The Bible says you can get angry, but sin not. And, you know, I get angry, but for me to actually take it farther and disobey God's command and sin, mm -hmm. that means I'm going to have the servant to say, okay, Listen to the voice of God while I'm in this anger to hear him say, settle down. Amen. Amen. And we can cut that voice off and go do our own thing. Sure. But what would God want? Amen. It's not wrong with getting angry. But we want to listen to God and say, just give it to me. Yes. All ye that labor and heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Yes. Because you notice when you get angry, what happens to you? You kind of like Take it a little bit too far. Mm -hmm. you, want, you want to share your anger with somebody else and talk about whatever made you angry. Mm -hmm. And then you can go, you can, you can really start to really tear yourself down physically. Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah. So, spiritual discernment allows us to identify when spiritual forces are at work. Amen. i read that again. Spiritual discernment allows us to identify when spiritual forces are at work. Mm -hmm. That's important. You go through a situation, and it's like, well, what's causing me to get upset? What's causing this situation to happen? So as we hold still and listen to God's spirit, he allows us to say, wait a minute. He allowed the situation to happen, but how are we supposed to handle it? Like I said earlier, you know, one thing about the sermon is that you, you always go the same way to work, but all of a sudden, he takes you another route. And you read the next day in the paper, it was a... Uh, uh, it was the, you, the way you went, it was railroad tracks. It was a terrible accident right around the time that you would be there. Mm -hmm. So that's important that we be able to hear God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, praise God. Listen. The ability, I want to read this definition of it, uh, uh, another definition of a spiritual, I mean, discernment. To understand or know something through the power of the Spirit. Like I said, it's the gift from the Holy Spirit, and it's the gift from God, and he wishes all believers to have it. But one of the reasons why a lot of believers don't really experience discernment is because unconfessed sin in their lives. Mm -hmm. I say that again. A lot of the reason why people don't experience the spirit of discernment is because there's so much unconfessed sin in their life. You know, God is letting you, telling you, speaking to you, that you can't go any farther unless you confess of that particular sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? But while you continue on to being deceived, amen, and not taking hold of that, God is not, he can't get through. He can't get through. So you're not getting any answer. He, can't, he, he can hear you, but he's not going to act. Because we got to play our part. We got to show that we all things work together for good for those who love Him, Amen. and we love Him because we keep His commandments. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want you to look at a particular story in Acts chapter, the, the, the sermon that uh, Paul recognized him and Silas when they were on one of their journeys. And look at Acts chapter sixteen. Amen. Acts chapter sixteen. Praise the Lord. And here is 1616, 16 through 18, matter of fact, it's two verses. Here, Paul was, uh, uh, Silas were preaching, and it was a woman who had the spirit of divination, spirit of fortune telling, a soothsayer. And she made a lot of money for her masters. And she was following them, Paul and Silas, along saying, these are the men of the Most High. Yes, she was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. But here, let's look at the interesting fact here, how Paul handled the situation. In that Acts 16, 16, 
it says, praise God, And it came to pass, as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a, with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. The same woman, this uh, 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 damsel, followed Paul in us and cried saying, These are the servants of the Most High God. Very true. Which showed unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. Now watch this. But Paul being grieved, in other words, he's being grieved because God was giving him the sermon about this particular woman. Turned and said, he didn't say that to the woman, her name might have been Joyce. He said, he said and turned to the spirit. Turned to the spirit. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. So what's going on here? He discerned after many days, this woman was telling the truth. But he did not want, watch this, he did not want to associate with this woman, even though she was telling the truth, because she was of the devil. And he didn't want anybody to know that him preaching the gospel had anything to do with demons. Now why do I say that? Something I did when I first came on board here at the church. I, uh, um, I, uh, it was a couple of members who had actually went to different churches and experienced different things and different doctrines, and some of them experienced doctrines of heresies. Heresies is a doctrine that is contrary uh, against what is taught in Christianity. So it was, it was false doctrine. And there's no way I could have got them because they was coming to me, well, once you bite this person, once you bite that person. But what I wanted to do was, I think I did it three times, I invited these individuals because I knew what they were teaching, but I invited them, amen, to uh, uh, let the, the congregation see the difference and the things that we were teaching different here. It became very effective because some of them by first hand began to see that it was wrong. So why did I do this? It was kind of tricky because it was like, well, you could actually deceive some of the people. Well, at the time, we were teaching sound doctrine. We were just saying what the Bible was saying. So when they came to present themselves, and they presented a heresies and things that was in con it was contrary to what they'd been hearing. Mm -hmm. So they just heard about this person, or they might have liked them the way they presented things. But let's, let's get them here and find out what's going on. By doing that, a lot of members were able to see the difference between, uh, because you know, Bible says Satan is like an angel of light. He he's he will mix in, and you got churches who have, you know, they got some gospel, but they got a whole lot of devil, and you got to be able to discern these things because these churches are out here. He has his ministers all over the place, so you have to really discern what is evil and what is good. So it became very effective, and that was something. It, it, it doesn't have to really worry about it right now because, you know, the longevity and how we've been teaching here, y'all wouldn't know right off the bat if, if that's not, that's contrary to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That was just the beginning of why I had to do that. It was kind of tricky, but it worked. It was effect, It was effective, amen. Because I knew that their teaching was suspect. Mm -hmm. But I had to let the congregation See, amen. So it was very effective. Amen. Uh, it's easy to make a wrong decision, a bad judgment, when we respond, like I said, out of anger or some other emotion. we got to really watch that. Remember we talked about the emotions tell us how we feel and, and uh, our mind tells us what we think. But then it goes along and says, but our will tells us what we want. And this is where we really got to be careful that a lot of times making discern, uh, uh, discernment or making decisions, we should not do it out of feelings. Because somebody does something to us, we can get emotionally upset and do something that we regret later. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Or if we think a certain way, that's why Jesus tells us to take no fault. Because all faults is going to come at us to have us to think some kind of, some kind of way. 
But we ought to go deeper than that to our will and say, okay, what would God want? Amen. How will God handle it? Amen. And see, that's when discernment comes in. Yes. That's when you allow the spirit of discernment come in. Okay, I know how I feel. I know what, what I want to do. And I know what I think. And I know what I think I ought to do. Mm -hmm. But what is what we ought to do is follow the will of God. Jesus. And not stand on our own understanding. Amen? Amen. It's so important. Amen. So God wants his children, all of us, to have a discerning spirit. We can't make it out here. How come, think about it, if you have children. How can, what, look at what's being taught in, in the world today. Jesus. I mean, especially when he's coming up and it's still be, probably being taught. It's evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, they go back to the tadpole. And the, and the monkey. <laughs> and the first thing I would say to uh, uh, that, that theory, because a theory is a logical guess. It's not a fact. Mm -hmm. It's a theory. You know, we derive from monkeys. Well, somebody need to go to the zoo and tell them monkeys, when you going to grow up and become a human? You know, it's just so, it's, it's so sad, but we need to be able to discern and teach those things because the curriculum in, in schools today and in homes today, I mean, homeschooling is great, especially if you're teaching in a form, in a sense of, uh, you know, uh, biblical principles. But uh, uh, how, did, how did homeschooling come about? You know, because they found out that the curriculums in schools were teaching or teaching something contrary to what we believe. And we have to be able to have discernment to teach our children because they are faced with all types of knowledge out here now. All types of things in the air. Amen? So many things, it's, it's, it's a shame. Amen? Amen. Uh, we need discernment over sin. Because sin deceives us. Mm -hmm. It deceives us. It does. I mean, the sermon over sin is what? We are the first, when you have a sermon over sin, we are the first to be thinking about this is the sermon over sin. First of all, if I commit this sin, what are the consequences? That's the sermon. If you're not thinking that, you, you're, you have made your mind up to sin. Uh, this one particular verse in James chapter uh, 1, and James chapter 1 says, watch this, it says in verse 14, it says, amen, it says, but every man is tempted when he was drawn away by his own lust. Mm. Amen. And then he's enticed, or other words, he's trapped. So read it again. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Amen. See, that means you made, you made the decision. Before you sin, you can't blame it on nobody. You made the decision. But the spirit of the sermon say, Ho! Oh, understand the consequences. Now, here's the consequences and, and record it in verse 15. It says, And then when lust have conceived, what does it do? It brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So something going to die. Something's going to get cut off. It's going to be something that's going to, that's going to bring to your attention. Shouldn't have done that. You ever heard, you ever hear, you be in your life, you say, something told me not to do that. <laughs> but it's after the fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's after the fact. We should always want to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen? Because listen, His Spirit promised to lead us and guide us to all truth. You know, as we became born again, from the day that we became born again and the day we leave this earth, He wants to lead us. Because He set up a plan and a purpose for us to get through and understand this is the way I want you to, this is the road I want you to take. He is, it's already paved out. So our job is to listen to the Spirit of God. Because you're going to have trials and tribulations. You're going to have those uh, 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 storms. You're going to have frustrations. They're going to happen. But if you love God, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. You ain't got to say why. Well, I'm a believer. So what? Jesus was a believer. Amen. Look what happened to him. Praise God. He told us to pick up our cross and follow him. We're going to suffer these things. So when you look at things that come into your life, look at it in being fortunate that, that these things are happening, and you should, we should be saying, 
Well, what is, how is God, I want to see what God's going to do in this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, see, some of y'all say, what? Mm -hmm. That ain't my first thought. Mm -hmm. But it should be. Yeah. And say, well, you know, this situation is hard, and this, this thing is, I'm in mean, right now, and it's like, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But we ought to say, God, what you got here? I know you got something good. Amen. I'm going to continue to love you. Because you said all things work together for good. So I'm gonna do, my part is to love you and keep your commandments. And you said you're going to manifest yourself unto me. And see, this is what we got to hold on to. That's hearing the voice of God. That's hearing discernment. Instead of saying, why is this happening to me? You know what? It's probably because I haven't gone to church. And I probably missed Bible study last week. That ain't got nothing to do with anything. Amen. That's nothing to do with you. a believer. Stuff is going to happen. Confirming the souls of the disciples through much tribulation. We must. Do Amen. much. Amen. Enter the Amen. kingdom of God. We must do much. Amen. Amen. So it's dangerous to live today, watch this, without a discerning spirit. I don't know how you can make it. I don't know how a person can make it. Because we got stuff coming from every direction, man. Every direction. In the home, out of the home, on the job, in the store, where you go. There's friction. There's opposition. There's spiritual warfare. He warns us in 1 John 4, verse 1. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. But listen, but try, test, discern. Amen? The spirits. So we ought to be spirit detectors. These are these forces. These spiritual forces. Because you say you're a believer. Look, you're going to get, you're, going, you're under attack. If you don't want to be on attack, just denounce Jesus. I don't want him to do with him. I, you know, it's too much trouble. You thinking you got trouble now. You better not denounce him. It says, whether they are of God, because there's many spirits out here, because many, many, many false prophets have gone out to the world. So these are the things that God wants us to to give us a sermon or an insight or a mental vision of really what's going on. You ever meet somebody and something tell you, don't do this? You know, don't get in that car. Amen. Don't come over here or, you know, oh, we're just going to have a good time. You can just go with us for a minute, little bit. And something strongly is telling you, don't do it. Don't do it. It's almost, it's almost like they're screaming to you from the inside. Yeah. What do you think that is? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Thank you, Lord. Yes. See, that's sensitive to the voice of God. In first, uh, uh, in Timothy, it tells us, 1 Timothy 4, it says, uh, 1, 2, 1 and 2. The Spirit speaks expressly, in the latter days some shall depart from the faith. Watch this. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what is that telling us? If spirits are here, uh, you know, some going to depart from the faith. Why? Because these spirits are seducing us. I told you, they're all around us. How are you going to test them? How are you going to discern them if you don't have the spirit of discernment? You won't know. You know? You won't know what's going on. That's what the Bible tells us in First uh, Peter 3. It talks about a person who desires an office of a bishop or a pastor. One of the things it says, don't let them be a novice. That means a beginner. Because you don't know what it tells you. You don't know what the force is up against you. So many preachers have become pastors and what happens, you know, they don't, they don't have enough experience and they get in these positions and they can be brought out. They can be uh, under the... Uh, uh, this experience of actually pleasing the people that are pleasing God. Yes. And then what happens, they become so much self-centered and the ministry come, becomes all about them. But then you hear down the road, Satan has set them up and they caught in some type of adultery or some type of scandal mm -hmm. that, that, uh, uh, that gives the church a bad name, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And it, it, that's why you can't be a novice. You've got to be somewhere with God where God can... Can grow. Remember the song we just heard. I'm getting stronger. Amen. It didn't say that about getting weaker. We got to get stronger. Because if we don't get stronger, 
Look, these, these spirits are not going to, you know, let up on us. These forces, they want to they kill us and uh, rob us and destroy us. Amen? Amen. So we got to be able to put on the whole armor of God. Be able to hear the voice of God so we can be protected. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes, Lord. Uh, one, when one is caught up in sins and, and, and don't address them or confess them, it's very difficult to hear from God. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says this. The Lord's hand is not short that it cannot hear. I mean, save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have had have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So what happens when well, we don't confess our sins? And we just go on about our business. One part of that first John, I mean that first Timothy 4, I didn't read. Where it talks about um, 1 Timothy 4, 2, it says, uh, it says, having lies of uh, 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 hypocrisy and having our conscience shit like a hot iron. Meaning, once those seducing spirit comes in and we do things and we cut off and we shun God and we greet the spirit of God, giving us information how to handle situations, and we say, well, I, I can handle this one. All right, and what happens is, but being seduced and seduced to the point where when we do sin, we don't think no big, think no big deal of it, and we don't confess it, amen, and we don't confess that thing, and we don't admit it to God, and what happens is we become very sensitive to sin, and more than that, we become, so we become sensitive to sin, we become uh, 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 non-sensitive to the voice of God, desensitized. So what happens is God is telling you, you can't continue to do this. And people wonder why, listen, you wonder why in your life, you know, you know when you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. well, watch this. You know what's wrong. Amen. And what happens is you can continue to, because you really know how to walk away. Mm -hmm. And your faith is really lacking in God. You're not really seeking Him. You're not asking God. So you continue on doing those things. Now watch this. Don't be surprised when the storm comes and God let it rain. And let it rain. And let it rain. You figure it should be over by now. Why is this happening to me? This is why the Bible says, examine yourself, whether it be of the faith. If you're a believer, but what happens is, God demands that we show some type of, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we show him. What's the term in the world says? Action. Speaks loud in the words. Well, God will see some actions. How much you love? How much you love me? You seeking me with your whole heart? Are you are, are you seeking my word, my truth? Are you trusting in me? People, believers, are suffering needlessly because of unconfessed sin. And you know it, it, it's 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 sad to see. It's sad to see. We talked a couple of weeks ago about uh, 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 strongholds. You know, and it's sad to be in the church for so long and still allowing little things to hinder you. Come on, somebody. Come on, man. Seriously. Some have been in this role for a long time. Come on, man. But we're still allowing little stupid stuff. Yeah. Stuff that the Spirit has already said, man, you should know better than that, but you, do, you don't do nothing about it. You think God's going to say, all right, but don't do nothing about it. You're okay. No. He demands that we be pure in heart. Amen. He demands that. He has things he wants to give us, but he can't give them to us if we're going to be in that state of mind. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Our prayers, our prayer every day should be this. Psalms 119, 125 says, I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your commands. That should be our concern every day. Lord, I need you. You know, you show me the way. Show me the way. Show me what to do. Yes, Lord. I'm tired of just have think about it. How many of us how many of us get up every day and you know the first thing they say, but well, you ought to pray. First thing we I do is go on and brush our teeth. Amen. Take care of ourselves. Think about what we're gonna wear if we didn't prepare it that night before. And we're really thinking about, you know, tired and this and that. 
But I never really get a time to really say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. I mean, to be conscious of it. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Sure. You know, I've seen, but the Bible says, you are in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. I've been in situations where I've been late for such a, 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 an appointment, and I, 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 you know, since you get up on a ramp on 95, you can't back down. <laughs> You're going steady 60, and all of a sudden, oh no, you see a row of cars Jeez. going about 10 miles an hour. <laughs> but what happens is, the sermon tells you to just turn on some music. This is, it is what it is. <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, you see almost like the Red Sea opening up. <laughs> the, the, the traffic begins to open up and you make it just on time. Amen. And you could have sat there when you got one of ram and complained, oh no, what happened? Yeah, you see? I mean, we got to really start, God's, God is a good God, y'all. Yes, yes, if he promised no weapon formed against you shall so prosper, that's what he means. See, that weapon, when you go up on the freeway, was a, that, that, uh, 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 that enemy that was trying to inflict you could have been in your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got you all angry, got you all upset. We got to allow God, I mean, I'm, everything is not going to be pieces and green. Amen. But we ought to understand that this too shall pass. Amen. It's not going to last forever. Yes, Lord. You know, you can stay there all you want, and you stay there, and it'll last forever. You can stay miserable. But God makes a way of escape of that temptation. We can take the temptation and say, you know what? This and that, this and that. Blame it on somebody else. But that's not how God operates. Look at King Solomon and all his wisdom and his discernment. When he bought the baby, when he bought the woman to him, and the woman had tricked her, she laid on her, her child, and she took the other woman's child and went to the king, and they was complaining about, this is my child. The woman said, no, no, this is my child. And then the woman says, uh, well, won't we cut the baby in half? Yeah. But the true mom stepped up and said, well, you know what? Let her have the baby. And Solomon said, you the mother. Because what nobody in their right mind would cut that baby in half and give him that, keep one half. Nobody would do that. So he had great uh, 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 wisdom and discernment because, number one, he asked for it. He sought up the wisdom and knowledge from God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. The word itself is said to give us discernment of the thought and intent of our heart. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two of the sword. It gives us the ability to discern the thoughts and intent of the heart. That's what discernment does. The word gives us that. But mainly, we look at, you know, the Bible tells us in Psalms 119, 130, it says, the entrance of thy word gives light or understanding or discernment. See, when... So when you feast on this word, you know, Bible tells us in Joshua chapter, I believe, 1, verse 8. If you meditate day and night and deserve to do the things that are written therein, then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have great success. Amen. So in other words, when we just allow this word to get in here, just get in, just get in, just get in, just get in. Do you know God is setting up a, 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 a fortress inside of you? So when the time comes, he wants to use that word, amen, that you're, to, uh, you know, he wants, to, he wants to bring it back to your remembrance. Can't remember all this stuff in the word of God. But it's the Holy Spirit's job to do it. Our responsibility is full up on the word. Get the word on the inside, amen. amen. And see, I thank God that he can pull from me the things after all these years that I thought I forgot about in my mind. That God brought them to, to uh, uh, the, the forefront. Praise God. That's a beautiful feeling. Knowing that all to just relax and understand and realize, God, you got this. You got this situation. Well, if I didn't apply myself and I didn't let the word of God to come in me where it said the entrance of that word and want no word coming in, the Holy Spirit can't pull from nothing. He can't pull from anything. And then we don't have any light. Amen? Amen. We don't have any light. So, the gift of the sermon is from God. And I noticed something too. Our failures help us discern the next time. 
That's why you, 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 you fail, you make mistakes. Now, you, the next time, you know, you say, I don't want to go through that no more. So now you're more keen to hear the Spirit of God. You want to listen more. Amen? Are we here? Praise God. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Amen? Look at verses... Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, look at 14. 1 Corinthians 2. Now let's start. Now let's let's actually start from uh, 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 13, 14, and 15. Watch this. Now start with 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. You see that? We have received the spirit of the world. Watch. But the spirit which is of God. Now I'm going to stop right there. Do you know how important it is to recognize and know that... Uh, the greatest benefit that we have is that we have the Spirit of God in us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Man, some of us, I don't know, some of you forget that sometimes. Or don't even rely in the presence of the Spirit of God in us. I mean, that's so important. If you're born again, He's there. But the sad thing is that we grieve him so much. We sadden him because we never call on him. We say, I got this and we ain't got nothing. We can't fix nothing. But God allow us to go on thinking that we can fix stuff till we get to the point and realize, I can't do this. And he said, thank goodness. I can do something now in your life. Show you how to live. Show you how to walk. Show you how to talk. Show you how to get over. See, we, you know, he says, pick up your cross and follow him. Right? Come on, somebody. Mm. Watch this here. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of, which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Listen, things are freely given to us of God. But we fighting and, 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 and going through turmoil and wondering why what's going on. And he said, I freely give this to you, but you ain't recognize it because you're still operating the following spirit of the world. Come from among them and be ye separate. Ain't no, you know, one day you over here, uh uh. You gotta be gotta be going upward. You gotta seek those things that are above. And not on this earth. They can't do us no good. Oh, watch this. Praise God. Mm. 13 to 14 is important. Which things also we speak, not in the words with man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches what, listen, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That whole thing right there sums up the sermon. Because we're just, we, you know, we're comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. All right? Now, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, the ungenerated man, all right, the unsaved person is identified in verse 14. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, when you're not saved and you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't have any information. You're, you're doomed. You don't have that inner compass. This is the benefit of being born again. That was a born of spirit is spirit. And that was born of flesh is flesh. And see, we don't focus more so much on spirit, man, and understand that this is where our information comes from. Psalms 51, 6, David says, Lord, you desire truth in the innermost parts. So that's the information not going to come from out here. It's going to come from within here. Yes. Through the Spirit. Thank you, God. When God gives us something or information, that's where He's coming from first. He ain't coming to our head. He ain't coming to our flesh. He's coming to that inner man. Yes. That's where it's going to, that's where it's going to be a, 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 a hatched. Or it's going to come forth. So that means we've got to hold still and recognize His voice. 
Amen. What is it? How we recognize his voice? His voice is his word. Amen. That's his voice. It ain't hard to distinguish. Satan is against God. He's the Antichrist. He's going to be against the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Book of 15. No, he finished reading 14. But the natural man received of the things of the Spirit of God. Listen, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You see that? So you know the way you know they have to be spiritually understood. So in order to be spiritually understood, the Holy Spirit's got to tell us what things mean. He's got to tell us why things is happening. How many times have you been in a situation and it overwhelmed you? But all of a sudden, when it was all done and said with, what, did you, what happened? He explained to you why it happened. Amen. He explained to you why he had to take you this way. Yeah. And that felt so good. Yes, that felt so good to realize that, you know, he just didn't leave you hanging. He was showing you why I had to take you this way. Why you had to experience this. See, it could last some people a long time. It lasts those Israelites in 40 years in the desert, in the wilderness. It's an 11 day trip. Uh, I, I want you to look at 15. But he that is spiritual judge all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now, I want to go back over here to uh, a reading we had. I don't know if we looked at it already, but I don't think we did. But we looked at it in our responsive reading, Matthew 16. And of course, Jesus had discernment. We know that. But uh, it's possible for us as believers, watch this, to talk out of the side of our mouth. It's possible for us believers to be double-minded. Amen? Say one thing and do something and say something later on. Amen? We didn't mean to say it. We got caught up. We wasn't hearing the voice of God because see, Satan comes immediately. He wants us to take a thought. He said take, take no thought, right? But here in this passage of Scripture in Matthew 16, look at um, uh, 20. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Y'all hear? Mm -hmm. then, then he says in 21, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, that, listen, how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief uh, priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Now he's telling them, I'm going to go through all this. But guess what? They're going to kill me. Jesus. But then he goes on to say, but I'm going to get up. Amen. But somehow, Peter wasn't listening. <laughs> he says, then Peter, 22, took him and said, begin to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now look what Jesus said, 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus. Peter probably said, Hold up. <laughs> you calling me Satan? No, he wasn't calling him Satan. But he, was, he had discerned that Peter took that thought. See, you wasn't, see, a lot of times we ain't listening to what God is saying. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Cast all your care upon me. See, we don't hear that. So we go say something else. So in other words, we hear another voice. But he told us, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So Peter, he told them, I'm going to get up. They're going to kill me, but I'm going to get up. He said, you ain't got to go through that. But that's what he came to do. He came to die for the sins of the whole world. And he's going to get up on the third day like he did. Amen. Amen. So he said, get me behind me, Satan. You see that? Mm -hmm. So what's happening here is that a lot of times we ain't listening. Amen. We ain't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes us a long time to pay attention. Yes. After we bump our head 10 or 15 times when he keeps telling us to go this way or go that way and, make, and, 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 and do this, make this decision or make that decision. 
He's telling us over and over again. But I thank God he's long-suffering. He doesn't give up on us, man. Because anybody else would have gave up on us. How many times do you try to tell somebody, what's the first thing you say to them? I'm tired of fooling with him. I told him, thank God, I'm done. But God don't do that because you belong to him. He doesn't do that. He don't give up on us, man. He said, but get, let me finish reading it. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things of, be of God, but things be of men. So in other words, then Jesus said unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So Peter just wanted to, he says, you ain't got to go through this, Jesus. But he forgot the last part. They're going to kill me, but I'm going to get up. Amen. Who says that? That's powerful. Yeah. And we got to, and, 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 and what happened? He got up. What's our evidence? Our evidence is his spirit in us. Because he, well, he got up and he said, he said, look, I go to a fair place for you. But I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to give you my spirit. Amen. And he's going to be in you. And that's how we know that he was here because the spirit is in us. Praise God. And I thank God for that. That his spirit is in me. So I don't got to see Jesus. I know he was here 2,000 some odd years ago. Because he left his spirit. And it gives me evidence that he was here. Because he promised he was going to leave it. And I can't make it in this life without his spirit. And you can't make it. We cannot make it. We need his discernment. We need him speaking to us. We need him to tell us to go left or right. And make that decision. And we'll make that decision. We need him. Amen. So how do we develop a discerning spirit? Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Amen? Amen. This is powerful here. This is powerful. Amen. Mm. Hebrews chapter 5. Look at verse 11 through 14. You there say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Watch this. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to utter, seeing you are dull of hearing. And we're talking about dull hearing. Got to hear. Amen? amen? For when the time ye ought to be teachers. Amen? A lot of us been in, this, in, in, in the Word a long time. Come on, man. Well, what I say, I guess I say been in the church. Not so necessarily the Word been in us. We've been around it, but it ain't take up residence. Yet, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the articles of God, and are become such as need of milk and not strong meat. So you've been, you've been here for quite a long time. You should be off the milk. You know what I mean? That'd be pretty sad if all y'all walked in with pacifiers in your mouth. Amen. Amen. That looked pretty bad, wouldn't it? And I'm passing out water, but you, you say, I got my water. I've got a bottle full of milk. That'd be bad. He says, for everyone that, watch this. This is powerful. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. See, that was a problem they had in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, Paul had a problem with those Corinthian of believers, he said, I, I can't come to you because you're acting like mere men. There's so much division and strife. You know, I, I can't give you meat. I got to give you um, milk because you're not using or, you know, uh, uh, practicing what you, you hear. That's the next person who's going to explain that. But strong meat belongs to them that are full age. Here's the point. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In other words, listen, in order to grow from, in, from an infant Christian to a mature Christian, watch this, we must learn discernment. We must train our conscience. We must train our senses. We must train our minds. And we must train our bodies to distinguish good from evil. So in other words, we got to practice what we preach. You know when y'all say amen? Yes. What you're saying is, I got it. Mm -hmm. 
I understand. But when these storms come, huh? Don't know what happened. See, it's got to get, it's got to get down on the inside. You see what I'm saying? God said He is thy truth in the innermost parts. Yes, Lord. It's like the temple, the holy of holies. That's where He's at in you, in the very core of your spirit. And it's, it's like that eternal flame. It never goes out. That's the life that he was giving us, his Holy Spirit. And this is what we all abide in. I mean, when he says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, that's powerful to me. So, majority of the time, all the time, when we're going through something, just hold still. Ask God, show me. Now he's going to start, remember we've been talking about what you need is already in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whitney Houston sang a song. The greatest love is it, the, the greatest love is what? It's inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Almighty God, the greatest love is inside of each and every one of us. Yes. And we go out here trying to get all our answers from everybody else. And God just saying, hold still. Come unto me. All you that working, trying to figure it out, laboring. He said, I will give you rest. It feels so good to just come to God and say, God, here I am. I'm yours. I'm talking about every situation, y'all. Every decision. It's that easy. We got to make a habit to seek God. Yeah. Everybody's seeking everything else. Thank you, Lord. We're not going, you didn't go wrong. It's going to happen. It rains on the just and the unjust. You're going to have trial and tribulation. But take heart. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. I have deprived the world of his power over you. Jesus. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. Just think about it. When it's all said and done, you're going to glory. So what's bothering you down here? Don't worry about nothing down here. It's going to, it's, 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 you suffer down here. It's pain down here. But we got to make the right choices. We got to choose the right people in our lives. Don't get caught up in these soul ties. We got to choose the right mates. Do they believe God? If they don't believe God, leave them alone. We got to believe God. They got to believe God. Don't be unequally yoked. Praise God. Man, uh, darkness can't fellowship with light. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Mm. Lord, I don't know how I got over there. <laughs> but but it's, it's just, uh, it, 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 it's sad to see us suffering when we try to make stuff happen. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make them right. What? You know, ain't going to work. That's the whole thing about that mysterious thing about coming together as one. You know, remember in 1 Corinthians 6, we talked about last couple of weeks, where it says, those who join to a harlot become one flesh. Mm -hmm. But those who come uh, join to the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. Amen. And he says, when we commit fornication, what happens is, we, I told you this is going to have something to do with singles. A uh, single, uh, uh, or married, either one. What happens is we become we become one. What we be doing is we're destroying our own flesh. Amen. So you might as well take yourself and bust yourself upside the head. Amen. Jesus. Come on. Amen. God have mercy. This is the sermon we're talking about. Yeah. It's the sermon that we're talking about. Yeah. We got it. I mean, we, we need it in everything that we do. Yeah. Mm. I would never want to live miserable with somebody and try to get them to change that they don't believe God. You got to go. <laughs> got to go. I'll walk into the door. As a matter of fact, you can't even come in the house. Can't even come in the house. Man, Lord have mercy. Okay, Holy Spirit, you tell me what to do. <laughs>
tell me what to do. Because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really, we really got to wake up. We really do because, you know, a lot of us are not really experiencing the power of God's Spirit in our lives. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. We're not because, like that verse in Hebrews, we're not, it's by, I read it again, that last 14, but strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use, Reason of practice. You got to practice what we preach. We got to practice what we preach. Have the senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So when we start utilizing and believing the word and trusting the word, now we're able to we're able to discern what's good for us and what's not good for us. Ain't gonna work no other way, folks. Preach, Ain't gonna work no other way. Preach. I'm a witness. Amen. I'm gonna make this thing happen. It won't happen, Captain. It won't happen. God, like I said before, I remember, uh, and I'll bring it back, I remember uh, I was tired out here. The rim ram and all the other crap out here. Tired of it. I looked in my mom's mirror in the dining room, and I said, God, you give me somebody who you want for me. Give me who you want for me. Seriously. I was serious. I didn't pray to God. But nobody else was giving me what I wanted. I figured I'd try God. I wasn't in the church then. Wasn't in the church. Two months later, I met my wife. But she was in church. So what God was telling me, I said, God, you, 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 you bad. <laughs> You gave me what I wanted, but you gave me what I needed. Amen. And I needed you. Yes. Yeah, amen? He said, look, I'm going to give you this, but that ain't going to sustain you. You need me. Yes. She was in a church, started going to the church. This thing started coming alive. And that was the greatest thing ever happened to me. Yes. Amen? Amen? The greatest thing. Yes. But it all started, it all started this way. God. You give me what you want yeah. me to have. Yes. Yes. I mean, what's, that is a simple prayer. God, just what you want. Remember 1 John 5, 14? We confident on this one thing. If we ask anything according to his will, we have it. Amen. So, you want your prayer answered? God, what you want? What you want, God? And he'll begin to give it to you. It's that easy. What's taking us so long? It's trying to push, trying to push our way forward. He told Paul, "Why are you kicking against the bricks, Mike? Why are you doing this? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Come to Jesus, man. We need to come to Jesus moment, don't we? We really do. Stop going to everybody else. <laughs> come to Jesus. And him make it happen." Folks, we need discernment. Yes, Lord. And discernment comes from the Holy Spirit. We need to have discernment so we can. I mean, you need discernment every day in your life. Yeah. Every day yeah. in your life. Yeah. People always say things like, and I'm closing with this. Lord, but well, you know, I'm, I'm attached to this. Watch this. I'm attached to this person. Mm. Yeah, we have our ups and downs and this and that. But you know. It might just work out because we really have a strong soul tie. It's a term that they have out here. I think how it goes. If you love something, let it go. Right? If it was meant to be, it'll come back. But we're not even doing that. We ain't letting it go. Because insecurity. Let it go. Trust God. If it don't come back, he got something for you. Come on. He got something for you. It's the trust in God. It's the wheelbarrow. With the guy going across a Niagara Falls. Right? He's going back and forth on this rope. Pushing his wheelbarrow. Back and forth. And it's a man standing there. So he starts to say, you know, I bet you this. I bet you that. He can go back and forth. So he's making money off of people. 
guy pushing the world around finally got back on the other side and said, do you believe I can do it? The guy counting his money, oh, I believe you can do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, yeah, I believe you can do it. He told the man, well, get in the wheelbarrow then. Wow. Yeah. Man couldn't do it. Because <laughs> he really didn't believe it. Action speaks louder than words. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.